Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with our concluding episode of this season of Magnificent Seven Rides Again. Today, we got the full gang here, and we're going to talk about the show, which starts this week at the Kerrville Arts and Cultural Center. So we're going to go through, and each one is going to start off by telling us who they are and then going to visit with us about a question. So, Nancy, what has the Magnificent Seven meant to you? It has meant that I get out of my studio and around other artists. It's, it's a fun group of friends that we get together and we plan things and do things. And this is our once a year group showing. Lots of fun. Don, how about you? What as the probably the newest Kerrville resident or Kerr County resident, what has the Magnificent Seven meant to you? I love the community, the, the community sense. It's an opportunity to spend time with people who really want to be around you <laughs> doing something that we all love. And in the communities that I have been a part of before, we just, we didn't have that. And I really believe that here with this group of women, we have something very special and I cherish that. So Deanna, you're the first of the Magnificent Seven I ever met. Yes. At the Hunt Art Fair. <laughs> And so what has the Magnificent Seven meant to you? Oh, it has meant that, I guess, camaraderie. We've been able to develop our relationship, our friendship, opportunity to get out there and share our love and compassion for art and uh, an opportunity to interview or interact with the public. It's just been a lot of fun. Janelle, what has the Magnificent Seven meant to you? I'd say, first of all, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed getting to know everybody, and I think we've had a lot of laughs. <laughs> we've worked hard. A little fatigue in there. Uh, we're all working so hard right here at the end, trying to get ready with everything. But its uh, I've learned so much from everybody. I think that's what's really valuable is getting to know everybody. We all have different styles in our art, and we really get to learn from each other. But the fun is probably at the top of the list. <laughs> well, Janet. I think along with it being a, a good venue for us to show our art, which is a good opportunity for all of us, it's the being in the group, this group of friends that we formed. And it's, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Laura, how about you? What is the Magnificent Seven meant to you? Two things. They've been a great support group, a group of artist friends, just a wonderful thing. Can talk about your work, your struggles, what you hope to do, what you hope to achieve. And then the second thing is it gives me a deadline, which I need and love. <laughs> Maybe I don't love, but, it, but I need it. So it gives me a deadline to work towards and do a cohesive body of work. And the Lane Capers, our West Texas group. Tell us what the Magnificent Seven has meant to you. The Magnificent Seven came together last year. I won't say by accident, but it came together uh, because there was a gap in time at the Kerr uh, Arts and Cultural Center. And with just a few phone calls, we were able to put together this beautiful group of women. and. The Magnificent Seven came together and knowing these women and getting to know them better and better as time has gone along and seeing how lovely they are and how supportive they are and how the friendships have deepened over the year. And when asked, do we want to do it again? And every one of them said yes. And then when I said, okay, 2025 is coming up and we have to get that contract in. And I said, do you want to go again? And they said unequivocally, yes, we've got something really good going here. Let me just follow that up with you, Elaine, because from my perspective, I actually saw several different strands or things going on, which culminated in the Magnificent Seven. but. It started with the Hunt Art Fair. We saw a group of artists get together and hunt 
and I think that was 2022. No, 23 years. 21. 21. 2021. That's right. My first summer here. Then we had the KACC need right. somebody. Then you guys were able to do this last year. That led me and inspired me to start a podcast series called the Hill Country Artists Podcast Series. Now you all have a Facebook page, the Hill Country Artists. And so what I see is all of these different strands sort of pushing in a way that I see local Hill Country artists supporting local Hill Country artists. Obviously, your group supports you all, but it's broader than that. And so I really wanted to have that very long-winded introduction <laughs> to ask you and the rest of the group, why is it so important or how has it really helped to have this kind of local support? Tom, it's critical that we support one another rather than tear one another down. You see in so many different businesses and in industry where it's so cutthroat and you step on one another to get ahead. And in the artist community, it's critical that we promote one another, that we support one another, and that we help one another. And as an example, last year I was working on a painting that just wasn't coming together. No matter what I did, it wasn't working. And I picked up the phone and I called Laura and I said, Next time you're in town, would you stop by the house and help me with this? And she did. And what she showed me, just a little tiny technique that she showed me, made all the difference in the world. And I could have picked up the phone with any of these women, and, it, and any of them would have come to the rescue. And as we branch out and know more people, we could do that with anyone that we come in contact with. It's just very important that we have that community that we can help one another rather than tear one another down. Laura, I want to use that basic question, but maybe add a little wrinkle because of your professional background as a teacher. Is this something that uh, an art community, a group of artists, even in a small town like Kerrville, can really help? Um, younger students to blossom, perhaps, that they can see that a, a group of women can get together and have success and have friendship and be a part of something bigger than themselves. We talked about, I had watched Dawn's podcast that she did a couple of weeks ago, and I started thinking, I think we've all taught somehow in the past art to someone and got to thinking, wow, we could set up some kind of workshop with children at the exhibit at KACC. And we had a, a massive <laughs> string of comments and, oh my gosh. And finally, we all decided we're not even finished painting paintings to put up <laughs> in the exhibit. We need to dial it back and, and wait for that dream. <laughs> so sure, yeah, we could, I think there's a lot of opportunities for teaching and helping. and yeah. So this broader community of artists, I've traveled across Texas and New Mexico going to local art shows, and there are just not too many towns that have this sort of support or this sort of group. There are towns that artists get together for lunch or a drink, but to have all of these things moving in one direction, how do you see that as fostering the art community? Since we, all of our art is different different medias and different techniques. I think it's easy for us to support each other, um, even not just within our group of seven here, but all the artists in Kerrville area. Um, I think that's important. It's, it helps us all to build up each of us by showing our different kinds of work. Janelle, how about you? I think we have, we really depend on the support that we each give each other. And like they were saying, we do different things, but the support is so important. And I've been in many a group in other places, the art teachers or the this or that and everything. And I think we're supportive. But this has been a support, I think, because it's small. And we're able to all help each other and call 
and say, what about this? And I wanted to give Laura credit. She's the one that came up with this idea that was such a good idea about helping letting kids come and do something maybe one day. And yeah, we all have a lot to do. So we're all stressed about it. But it's such a good idea. We all like the idea. And it's just, we learn from each other like that. It's so um, welcoming and fun. Deanna, in many ways, you've borne the brunt of my ideas. Um, <laughs> since I met you first, I started communicating you literally with, hey, would you guys be interested in getting together for lunch? And so it's led to these, not just the Magnificent Seven, and that's really what I want our audience to understand is there's a Facebook page, there's a group, you're branching out in different directions, and none of us know where it's going to go. But so how do you see all of that as not only helping you personally, but the local artist community here in Kerr County? Oh, good question. Why do I get the really good question? Yeah, I just, I know for me, the business aspect, we don't always have that down as artists because we're creative, but we don't always have business experience. And so being able to talk and bring that to a different level for artists, I think it's huge. And I think that we're able to share with each other and look at things a little differently as artists, besides just being creative on canvases or paper. We have to be creative artistically in our business sense, because we're not always business minded. And the art world and the business world changes so quickly, so fast, that if we're not sharing with each other, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> so I don't know if I answered your question, but. <laughs> yeah. Dawn. We've already announced that you're the newest resident to Kerr County, mm -hmm. and but you've been in other businesses, mm -hmm. you've owned a bookstore, you've had some other commercial opportunities and entrepreneurial uh, type situations. And how do you see the things that both I and the collective we have created here as moving this whole conversation about art in Kerr County forward? How do I see it moving forward? I would have to say. The fact that it's here to start with foundationally, this is a wonderful opportunity to be able to sit here at this table and have the network broadcast this. I think it will give other people hope. As we do this foundationally, we can encourage other people to move into that as well. It's just a great opportunity. I don't really know how to explain it any other way. And I just... I'm grateful for it, and I'm glad to be able to um, move into that with these ladies and with uh, the people at Kerrville. Nancy, for you, I wanted to I've signed up for your newsletter, so I get that oh, okay, weekly. Great. And so I get this for the Nancy report, as I call it. But it's a social media marketing outreach. And one of the things that I try to provide from my podcast is that but I want to emphasize once again, there's a Hill Country Artist Facebook page, and there's places where you can talk to others, have social media discussions. So could you say a few words about how you perceive the social media that you've been able to engage in and the group has been able to engage in through me or through your own efforts and even your email marketing? How is that pushing this discussion forward? The business, like everybody else has mentioned before me, the business aspect doesn't come naturally whatsoever. So it's always a, a learning experience. Just writing a monthly newsletter is difficult for me. I've even done silly things like trying AI, but I still think the, the human touch is what we all really need. Anyway, the Facebook page has come about. It's an offshoot. What we, we advertise for the Magnificent Seven there as well, but it's also just going back to the original like you said, the Hunt Community art show that we did. So it's really, even though there's seven of us here, it is a broader community in general. And we've had a lot of people join our Facebook page, not necessarily all artists, but people who are wanting to support us in what we're doing. And I wanted to take a second to just thank you again, Tom, for supporting us by doing these podcasts with us. Well, let me just uh, stick with you, Nancy, and I'm going to go around the, the room with the group, but what are you going to show us at this year's The Magnificent oh, Seven Rides okay. Again? 
this year, um, it's all farm and ranch. <laughs> I've got various um, farm animals, a, a few, uh, mostly from around here, but I've got a few paintings that were done a little bit further west of here, but mostly farm animals and water and skies and things like that in all sorts of sizes. I've got all the way from five by seven to, I believe the biggest is 18 by 24. But anyway, that's my theme for this year. I, I'd like to stick with a the theme. So, All right. Don, can you share with us what you're going to show this year as the Magnificent Seven rides again? This year, I have played a little bit with my landscapes, and I've added things like an old truck, the old Texaco bed and breakfast. And so I've added things to my landscapes. Mostly, I will be doing landscapes. But I also love floral, and so I've stuck a a prickly pear cactus in there and just tried to think Texas because <laughs> I'm a Montana girl and I got one foot in Montana and one foot in Texas and I'm trying to figure it all out. But <laughs> it's been really fun to just to just paint uh, what inspires me about the Texas landscape as well as a couple of pieces from Montana. All right, Deanna, what do you have for us this year as the Magnificent Seven rides again? Animals, lots of animals. Uh, I love this part of the country because of the big game that's here. And so it gives me an opportunity to see and experience some of that when I'm just driving around. As you all probably know, the big ranches with the black antelope and the buffaloes and all the neat things. So a lot of animals, some landscapes, but um, predominantly animals. Janelle, what do you have for us this year as the Magnificent Seven rides again? I typically almost always do landscapes. I am kind of obsessive with trees. So I almost have trees everywhere. I was looking at the ones I that I'm done and it, I think about three of them were photos that I had taken in Colorado. We lived there for about five years. And of course, endless number of beautiful places. And so it's just so much fun, especially when it's someplace you've been and taken a photograph. And I tend to take photographs everywhere I go on my little phone. But so it's just so much fun to remember exactly where that was. I love looking at my photos and trying to decide now what hiking trip or where were we? Mm -hmm. And so there was one that I was doing in Colorado. We used to pass it all the time on the way to Vail. And it's just beautiful river, this huge rock that I always wanted to get out and climb on and take pictures. And then the Aspen was obviously around se the end of September when all the Aspens start turning yellow. And so it's just so much fun to do that kind of uh, thing when it's someplace you've been and taken pictures. So I'd say most of mine are going to be landscapes. Janet, what are you going to have for us this year? Um, I mostly have landscapes also because of the beautiful trees in the area. Uh, but then I'm also in love with cactus and I love their cactus flowers. So I've got several cactus flowers, even have a a baby dawn under a, a cactus bush. Fawn, sorry. <laughs> sorry. A fawn. I don't know why I did <laughs> Anyway, sorry about that. Get it. Uh, and, but I have trees and some river scenes and just the local area. What do you have for us? I guess I'd describe my work this year as flora and fauna. I did a, a bunch of native wildflowers, several different types of cactus, a yucca, and then I've got some cows, a roadrunner, some longhorns, flora and fauna. All right. Elaine, what do you have for us this year as the Magnificent Seven rides again? Tom, you're going to be surprised. I have West Texas. I have several animals. I have a couple of birds and lots of Big Bend and uh, the Davis Mountains because that's where my heart is. I have a few things from the Hill Country area, but mostly West Texas. All right. Unfortunately, we're getting near the end of our time, but I promised that I would go around one last time and ask uh, for any final thoughts, anything about what we've done with this podcast series that you particularly enjoyed, or maybe something you'd like to try next year. So I'm going to start with you, Elaine. 
Well, we appreciate so much the time that you've given us on your podcasts and how you have supported us and put our mission out there. And we're going to have a brand new show next year with all new things. And as soon as the show closes this year, you can bet we'll start painting for next year. Laura? On that anxious note. (laughs) (laughs) Not even finished with this year. (laughs) I just wanted to say a couple of thank yous. Obviously, thank you to Tom, you and Andrew and your group. Thank you to Lonza Teague for the KACC mission because it is a great opportunity for local artists to exhibit their work. So fabulous programming that they've got there. Nancy and I judged a recent competition there and uh, had a lot of fun. And it just shows you what a wealth of talent there is in this area. Um, And then lastly, I wanted to thank Camp La Junta for providing the backdrop oh, for yeah. our Magnificent yeah. Seven rides again. Wrangler Dave, my neighbor, David Domain, was uh, huge in getting that going and what preventing us. <laughs> yeah, I, I was paired with the donkey. <laughs> anyway, thanks to David and to Katie, who was out there that day and was fabulous with all the horses and We took individual shots with her horse, who's a beautiful equine. So thank you to everyone who's helped the Magnificent Seven. Janet, what uh, final thoughts might you have for us? We're just so grateful to be included in this group. And it's for KACC to support us by having us these two years and hopefully next year. And they do a lot for other groups in Kerrville, art groups along not just us, but there's so many other groups that get to present there. It's, it's a wonderful venue to be a part of. Janelle? We just thank, first of all, we thank you all for all that you've been doing with the podcast, but there are just so many groups to thank, not only at the different locations they've talked about in the KACC, but just also all the people we know that support us. There's so many people that want to know, oh, are you all doing that again? And you're going to have, when you're going to be there. So I thank all the people and friends we have that are going to also be coming there. And as far as next year, I think one thing we're all going to do is we're going to plan ahead. (laughs) A lot of things. (laughs) I just have this feeling that we're going to plan ahead. (laughs) Maybe next week, but we're going to plan it. But it's been a lot of fun, and we thank y'all. Deanna? Just continued thanks for everyone that has been so supportive of us. You and Andrew for always putting up with all the woman-type things uh, that we've done and the craziness that we have. And the ladies, all of you guys, for supporting and always being there, too. But, yeah, friends and family, yes, thank you. It would be easy to say what they said, but it is what they said. I'm just very grateful for every single person that's sitting here and what you're doing through Hill Country Podcast. And the Cultural Center has been a huge blessing as a newcomer to the area for me. And so I want to thank Lonza. I I will say that I think I really got to know you in your February show. Yeah. Which uh, I really, my wife and I both really enjoyed. Well, thank you. And Nancy. Finally. (laughs) Final thoughts. Yes. Take us home. I mean, I believe we've already made the rounds on all the thank yous here, but thank you once again. And I just wanted to say again, please come out to our show that opens up on September 12th. It runs through October 12th. So we have a full month there in the big gallery. So lots of fun things to come and see. And then also on that Saturday, which is the 14th from two to four, we have our reception. So it's a really great time to come out and meet us in person. It's, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And yes, so. I have one more yes. thing to add. At the end of our show, each one of us will be giving away one signed print to a lucky winner. You just have to come to the show, sign up, and we will draw 
seven names, and each one of us will be giving away one print. That's great. We're going to link to all of this information in the show notes. I wanted to thank you all. This has been a ton of fun for me, and I look forward to seeing what we come up with next time.